everyone, and welcome to Financial Technology, or FinTech, Just the Basic Sports. This is to kick off our uh, Money Smart Week 2023 at uh, Bex Republic Library. Uh, what is FinTech? When did it start? Is it secure? Um, who is creating it? Am I using it? Join us to get all your answers to these questions and more. And our speakers today are Candace Hare. She is an OSU Extension Educator for Family and Consumer Sciences in Morrow County. Her specializations are health and wellness and financial wellness. Candace is a licensed social worker in Ohio with an emphasis in behavioral and mental health and is a certified personal and family finance educator. She is being assisted by Stacy Brubay, Brubage, sorry. <clears throat> and uh, Stacy is a program coordinator, community catalyst with OSU in Franklin County, OSU Extension. Uh, she works with individuals, groups, and community organizations to improve social and economic conditions. Before I turn it over to Candace and Stacy, I did want you to know that we are having a second Money Smart Week uh, program on Wednesday at 2 p.m. in the Quiet Reading Room. It will deal with Social Security. So please come and get all your retri retirement questions answered. So now I'm going to uh, turn our program over to Candace and Stacy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So hello everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Candace and I am the Family and Consumer Sciences Educator in Morrow County. Uh, county seat is Mount Gilead. I'm going to have Stacy introduce herself and we'll get started. I'm Stacy Burbage. I'm a program coordinator, community catalyst here in Franklin County. Okay. We're going to jump right in and uh, talk a little bit briefly here about Ohio State University Extension. And we are an education driven organization that promotes lifelong learning. You may or may not have heard of Extension. The Ohio State University is a land-grant university. Uh, Abraham Lincoln signed the Morrill Act stating that uh, farmers should, get, um, should have access to research-based data way back then. And then there was the Smith-Lever Act signed uh, over 200 years ago by President Wilson, which basically said that every uh, American had the right to uh, that research-based information come to them instead of them having to go to that land-grant university. In the state of Ohio, we have two land-grant universities, the Ohio State University and Central State University. So uh, wanting you to recognize and understand that we disseminate the latest research and technologies to increase productivity and expand the state's economic base. Stacy and I are here today to share much of that research-based information in regards to financial technology. And then a state, uh, statewide network with the presence, presence in every county, meaning in every county in Ohio, we are there and we have an office. And that, um, that links all those individuals and communities and businesses to research and development resources at The Ohio State University. Do you know about 4-H? Can you guys raise your hand if you're aware of 4-H? Okay, 4-H, if, if there was no, there would be no 4-H if there was not extension, okay? So we have 4-H educators, we have agricultural and natural resource educators, we have community development educators and uh, personnel throughout the state, as such as Stacy, and I am known as your family and consumer scientist educator. About 25 years ago, you would have known me as a home economics agent. Things have changed over time. So this presentation is available in alternative media upon request where trade names or vendors appear, no discrimination is intended, and no endorsement by Ohio State University Extension is implied. 
this institution is an equal opportunity employer. Provider, I'm sorry. So the objectives for today are to summarize the definition of financial technology or FinTech, describe who creates it, identify benefits and risk of financial technology and its use, determine what form is being used, and explain the future of financial technology. I'm gonna go over some definitions um, so you have kind of a shared understanding of what these words mean as Candace describes financial uh, technology in more detail later. So technology is a manner of accomplishing a task, especially using technical processes, methods, or knowledge. Innovation is a new method, idea, or device, or product, the introduction of something new. Financial relates to finance or financiers. A product is an item offered for sale, something that is produced, can be a service or an item. A service is the action of helping or doing work for someone. Did I go too fast or everybody got those? Okay. To automate. Automate, to make something operate automatically by using machines or computers. This is something that people used to do. <laughs> Applications, the act of putting something into operation. Application program, a computer program designed to carry out a specific task. Application software, a type of computer program that performs specific functions. Blockchain, a digital ledger of transactions maintained by a network of computers in a way that makes it difficult to hack or alter. Cryptocurrency, a digital currency which is an alternative form of payment that can circulate without the centralized authority of a bank or government. So, we wanted you to be aware of some of that verbiage and have a shared language because we're going to be saying many of these words and wanted you to reflect on what they mean. Some of those might be new to some of you and others may be like, this is what I use every day um, in my daily life. So what is financial technology? I'm going to give you a few different definitions. Uh, there are it all comes down to a final definition that we'll give you, but wanted to help you explore a little bit about uh, financial technology and what it means to different parts of us and industry and what's out there. So we're looking at it as a catch-all term. So this catch-all term can refer to software, uh, mobile applications, and other technologies that are created uh, to improve and automate traditional forms of finance for business and consumers. Any thoughts so far? Any? Does this look familiar to you? Is this something everybody's like, yeah, I understand this, or does this not make sense? Is this different than using an Excel spreadsheet or using some kind of an application like uh, instead of money, let's say, or that you well, it's, this is a good question. Okay, so. Could you repeat the question? Oh, okay. His question wanted to know how, is this similar to an Excel spreadsheet or different applications or is this different? So an Excel, Excel spreadsheet is a software that we're able to use in, in, in between a computer and we're the end users. Um, so let me jump here more and we'll see. So it's, it, Continue, financial technology continues to be innovative. So here, um, I'll try to get back and, and focus on what you asked, okay? Um, and hopefully it will come, become a little bit clear. But we describes the industry based on developing digital technologies that replace, supplement, or enhance existing financial services. So that's what we're focusing on when you've got a financial service, we're replacing it, supplementing it, or just improving or enhancing it. Okay, welcome. So, so far, it's, go ahead. Do you have more thoughts? Oh, okay. 
you look very thoughtful over there. So please. Yeah. And that's exactly, this is, and, and thank you for sharing all this. This is what Stacy and I want to let you know. It, it is really just a basic of trying to get you to feel more comfortable with uh, what financial technology is, to get a better grasp of this concept because it can be wide and vast and multifaceted. So that is why we just want to do basics because we can veer off into more detail but we, it's not something we're able to do tonight because many people will be like, I just need to grasp the concept of financial technology, otherwise known as FinTech. So it refers to the use of technology and innovation to provide financial services and products, okay? So when we, we're out there in the world and we are using financial products or services that come our way in multiple forms and in different, for different reasons, which could be trading, it could be you know banking, things like that. This is just a way to, well, refers to the use of technology to improve and automate financial services. We're just improving on those financial services that are out there to make life a little bit easier. Okay, and as well as there being to where there's less people involved, and it's more peer-to-peer uh, -peer and less sometimes third party. We'll, we'll talk more. Okay, the goal of financial technology, otherwise known as FinTech, is to make financial services more efficient, accessible, and user-friendly. So over the years, over the decades, we have uh, basically improved upon services um, through innovations. So here, we're looking at when did financial technology actually start? So when I say existed over 100 years, does, would you think that would really be true? Would you think that we're talking technology and what technology was 100 years ago? So any thoughts? It's just a different technology. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And it goes clear back to when we talk about um, just the first tools people used in the Stone Age. Those were like a, a simplified technology. They created something to help them accomplish something that they needed. They were innovative, and as she stated, there were, it was, there were tools, and there were, it was just a simpler way of doing something, the more simplified. Now we have more computer-based or um, machine learning or artificial intelligence as we go forward. Yes? So the Fed wire Oh, okay. And that is something I too had to look up. So Fed wire is, uh, let me see here. It's one of those where it's large payments. So, so let me jump back here then. So we have our communications infrastructure that we really needed to happen so um, across the United States and globally, right? So we've got that infrastructure in which we're able to better communicate as well as financially get those things accomplished we need to do. So the transatlantic telegraph cable came along in the 1850s, okay? And when we say transatlantic, what, what are we talking about? Where is this cable and what is it? Do you guys know? You guys know? It's, well, that's very true, yes, and it helped to um, broadcast. We're broadcasting um, uh, and telecommunicating. <clears throat> so there's this cable that's underground in the ocean, okay? So it's transatlantic, and it's a copper cable, and then as we, and it's, um, it help, it's got fiber, that copper and that fiber and that wireless technologies will transmit through. But even then, you're talking about just communicating and um, radio frequencies, things like that, okay? So similar when you're saying like the Morse code. Um, then they're talking about here um, the microwave and satellite um, radio spec uh, frequency spectrum on that spectrum, okay? So we got that transatlantic cable. And then we move on to our fed wire, and that is, um, a transfer funds of service, and it is a large value sums that are critical, that need to get paid immediately. So 
Um, it's just a credit transfer, like for companies and governments to push things through very quickly. So we're talking about the Federal Reserve banks, okay? Um, th through across the nation and they're um, strategically placed. So there's those um, funds that they're sending from their account to other accounts. Um, so it is a large amount of money that is being pushed through in a very timely fashion. But I thought that was interesting too. I'm like, oh, these things are happening? Okay, so then we go clear on up to credit cards, which I don't know about Stacy, but I really was not aware that credit cards um, came out in the 50s. Were you guys aware of that? Okay. Okay. It, your grandmother in back in the 50s. Her, his grandmother back in the 50s got a credit card. From Montgomery Ward. That in downtown? Yeah, okay, that's pretty cool. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. I don't know how I remember this. My, my dad's a great school who worked for General Electric for years. Mm -hmm. Within a few years, that's credit card. right. Th that's excellent too. So my grandmother as well did not have a credit card. I think until she was like in her 60s, and that was because she started to travel more. And for hotels to hold, you know, she needed to get to hold her room. She needed to get a credit card. And so otherwise, she was like, "Why do I need it?" Yes. Uh, Credit. I am leaving the marriage with, and she listed three credit cards, like the gas okay. credit card, the okay. extra card, maybe in the shop of the market mm -hmm. store, mm -hmm. but he had 26 credit cards that she could order. And that was those credit cards you're talking about are known as uh, financial technology. We were slowly innovating over the years moving forward. And she was making sure when you said that she's like, I'm no longer responsible, that my name gets off those cards and don't come to me because we have, in fact, separated. So therefore, that financial technology, though, is what we're talking about. We keep pushing forward. Um, we now are into, uh, basically, we're moving on to bank frames. You know, that innovation just continue to evolve to those bank frames and that online stock trading services. Things that go very quickly, that um, you know, financial decisions are being made quickly. Things are just happening and happen. And then we've got 1998. So what's happening in 1998? What's it say here? PayPal, PayPal okay? PayPal was founded and it represents one of the first FinTech companies and they that are going to op, that operate primarily on the internet, and this is considered a breakthrough, um, which continues to be revolutionized, as they say. We just continue to push forward by using our mobile technology, our social media, and that data encryption. So when I say data encryption, what does that mean? When something's encrypted, what is that? It's code. So you're saying, so credit card expiration dates, you, did, you said were not until much later. So, and I'm thinking like for some of those store cards, those cards like Montgomery Ward, that they did not, and then they started to have, correct, yes, more, they were more, it's part of that innovation uh, and, and kind of improvements where what's an issue? We're running into a snafu or a problem and we need to correct it, right? figure out so expiration dates. So thank you for sharing. Yes. It was a what? A Lazarus credit card. 
Lazarus here in, in Columbus. How, so, you're 76 years old, you remember. Hey, I still remember, I'm not from Franklin County, but I remember visiting Lazarus. And um, yes, it's uh, wonderful. Okay, so here, um, this Fentrack revolution then um, has led to those mobile payment apps, blockchain networks, and social media house payments, um, those payment options that we regularly use today. So we just want to, uh, just starting with these basics, letting you see how things have evolved and that, as you had stated, things were very simple, but they were innovative and tools and items were created to help us um, stay connected in our lives and keep moving and growing and being innovative. All right, so we're looking at who is creating financial technology, okay? So we create it when we see it or a need or a demand, right, is out there. When somebody starts to say there's, there's a hole or there's a gap, right? So startup, startups and companies are the ones who are out there uh, pushing financial technology. Um, so what is a startup? Anybody, can anybody explain what they know of as a startup company? Your own money. Say it louder. Your own money. Your own money. Well, that's, you use your money, and, you, and when you do a startup, you're using your money, or you can use somebody else's. But when you do a startup, you've identified there's a need or a demand on something. So you're going to invest in your ideas, right, your own money, or get somebody else. But that startup is, a, is a, an infant. It's a newly formed company or business, and it sees a need or a demand in what's happening, and it gains momentum, okay? So we've got momentum going financial technology. We're just pushing forward like crazy, okay? So that's where, um, go ahead, yes, you have a question? What are ETFs? Um, electronic fund tra or transfer and, and funds, so they're, um, I don't have the exact explanation for you at the moment, but that's a good question. I can answer that at the very end, okay? So you're, you're transferring funds, electronic transfer of funds, um, so, and, and options. So we're just pushing things through quickly. Um, so jumping in then, so we've got companies, so we have startup companies that are newly formed with that momentum, but we have our established companies who are like, hey, we actually see that there's a particular need or demand going on, and everybody is into this. So as a company, we're gonna really push to get more into that as well, okay? So here, I just put in a couple. We're talking thousands of companies that are out there. Robinhood Markets is one of the top 15 globally, okay? So this is just an example. As Stacy stated before, we don't, um, we're not specific on any sort of brands that we push. Um, we're just sharing information with you. So Robinhood Markets is a $7.68 billion company. It's a financial tech company. Here it tells us that it's American Financial Services Company. So it's in, based in America. It offers mobile app and website that allows consumers the ability to invest in stocks, electronic fund transfers, and options. Okay, so that's just one type of company that does one type of thing. We've got Chime. Has anybody ever heard of Chime? Okay, Chime is out there. It's pretty popular a lot these days. Um, it is also a global, one of the top 15 global companies. Um, their estimated value is $25 billion. They are a financial, tech, uh, financial technology company. They offer digital financial services through a mobile app that does many different things in their mobile app. So somebody may say, hey, I'm looking for some little extra help in money management, keeping up to date on things, um, maybe helping me accomplish a certain task. They'll download Chime on their smartphone, and then they're able to use that service if it meets their needs. If not, they're going to opt out of that app, um, uninstall it, and find something else. Now, in Ohio, and I did not know this, so I went looking for specific Ohio companies, like in the last 
um, 10 years that were created um, just in Ohio, but they can be used in different states as well or across the nation or globally. In Ohio, Lone Cheetah was founded. So when we look at Lone Cheetah, it says it's a platform for vehicle title loans. That's what it does, okay? So it offers instant online pre-approved amount based on the age, your make and model of the vehicle, and then matches that applicant to a nearby store located to collect the cash. So it's just another way of doing business uh, for an individual who may not want to totally get out there and do things like things had been done in the past. They're like, hey, this is gonna make my life simpler, easier, or just a quicker way of getting something done. Are you with me? Okay, you guys are great, thank you. Just keep throwing questions at me if I can't answer them. I'll give you my uh, business card and Stacy and I can get back with you for more details. So is FinTech secure? This is a good question. So we put in here information with our Federal Trade Commission. Um, if you go to their website, the, Fed, the FTC will say that FinTech describes the emerging marketplace of new financial technologies. They point out, we're, we're with FinTech. We're, we're up to date on all this. We're keeping up with everything. And it, um, basically they're saying, um, even as companies innovate in the products they offer and how they offer them, they're still um, established consumer protection principles that they're going to put into play there. So they're not out of the norm of anything. The FTC is paying attention to what is going on to make sure that consumers are protected. So if people have questions or concerns, they're keeping up with how to further protect them and they may find gaps or loopholes because this is innovation in using technology. Things are flying at a very fast speed and so those regulators are trying to keep up and sometimes there may be some holes and gaps that they will need to um, fill, backfill um, to make sure that people are protected but consumer protection is first and foremost. So then I've also got here that our applications, so all this financial technology applications are relatively new and they're not subject to the same safety regulations as banks, which is interesting because as banks, you know, they're very tight on them. They pay attention to what's going on uh, because we don't want the consumer to get financially hurt. Um, here, you can trust financial technology, but I do have, hey, let's be cautious, okay? Trust, but verify. Trust, but pay attention. Trust, but be careful, and you, it can still benefit you, but you're just going to be paying attention. So one of the reasons we wanted to have this class is just to get people slowly familiar with financial technology and what's going on out there. So, so far, my, are, are you with me still? Yes. Online fraud? Right. Do you think that was a, what the solution to online fraud yeah, and, and prevention? Less mm -hmm. Is it like a kind of regulation thing or does it work on consumer behavior? It, it, it can be both and a third. So you said, is it online regulation part of, you know, that can help? Is it consumer behavior? Uh, yes. And education. Okay. So consumer behavior. Consumers only know what they know until they learn more, until we venture out, until we say, scam, 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 this is the newest scam, and then people start to pay attention to say, oh, I already know that scam, okay, or no, I'm not aware of that scam, right? Or fraud, we get lots of fraud alert information, and we need to, as consumers, we need to learn to, and we all are, to pay attention Sometimes things can be white noise, right? We're like, eh, it's too much. 
but sometimes we really need to slow down and pay attention. Another thing is those regulators can jump in um, and help us to pay attention. Your attorney general of your state can put out alerts more than ever or have people go to county to county to say these are more things that are happening for online or for door to door. And as Stacy and I want you to know, with Ohio State University Extension and Extension Services, there's, it's education. I don't know what I don't know until somebody sits me down or says, hey, here's a, here's a research journal we want you to read, or hey, I'm gonna go and learn more information. So Helen may say, I've got a lot of information to share and I'll go to one of her classes to pick up data and information and vice versa. And then we share that. We spread research-based information so people and consumers are more aware. Yes? It, That they've made off of consumers. That, I just yeah. saw a sign in somebody's yard. Two percent of the population owns forty-nine percent of the assets. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you, the people who have these companies are well intended, and they have great ideas, but they're also scammers. Mm -hmm. they're Okay, yes, exactly. Which you know, um, that Bitcoin, mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of confused it's about that. Cryptocurrency. It seemed like yes. it was a, a great thing, and now all of a sudden. Then it dropped in value, and a lot's been happening, and the, the one individual scammed yeah. people, yes. So it's very confusing it's, about Bitcoin. It, it, it is, it is, and I'll get back to that in YouTube. Let me hear what you have to say. Out of their mailboxes, or yeah, out of the mailbox. Are, okay. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, or, the mailbox is cited, but I think there were even some crooked employees inside. The okay. Who would separate out on the mail? They knew were bills. Okay. They were washing checks. Okay. Now they got caught, but I, I guess that's rather easy money mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead, please share. Yeah. Hacked into things. Yeah, it, but, okay. So this, this, so thank you for sharing. This goes back to, can I say, how, what's your first name? Drew Zan. Drew Zan. So and what Drew Zan stated, like the, the scam artist and that people get hurt first before we fill that gap, right? So that happens in, in, you're right, majority of times. So when we're looking at, we're talking about checks being stolen out of mailboxes or either through the mail, the post office behind the scenes, 
So years and years ago, for an example of how that was corrected, if you get a social security check, does it now go to your mailbox? No, it, it does not. So at some point they started, they gave people the heads up like a year ahead or two years, you need to get a checking account and you need to where we're gonna do direct deposit. We need to get you signed up because people were getting scammed, people were getting hurt, people were getting stolen from. So these are great examples. Thank you for sharing. These are concerns. The more we push with technology and innovation, then we see these risks over here. We'll talk just briefly about some of those risks and benefits. You're absolutely right. It's good to be aware. It's good to be cautious. And once again, it comes into consumers being aware, but they can only be aware if that information is out there for them to obtain how to protect themselves, such as libraries having programs that connect with their community members and they bring that information to them and people can sit, pick up that information when they're ready and available. And sometimes we're not ready to hear it. Sometimes we're like, yeah, yeah, whatever, until it's you know six months later, we're like, now I'm more open to hearing a remedy because it, it's more in my purview. I'm seeing more and more things happen, such as you're bringing up like Bitcoin and you're reading this about the scam artist and what's been going on the last year um, with cryptocurrencies and specifically Bitcoin. This is all good stuff. Yes, I like your question about what do we do? This is what we're doing. We're making everybody aware. I grow and learn. Um, so does Stacy. The nature of uh, extension, the Ohio State University extension is called lifelong learning. So how old we are does not matter because we continue to grow and learn. So, I yes. I just to say, I used to work for OSU extension. You did? Campus oh my gosh. Extension of the okay, well thank you. And what county did you work in? Franklin. You worked in Franklin? And what did the you do? Consumer education mm -hmm. is really important. And it is. And, like and thank you. That is one of my specialties because as a consumer, it, it makes me deep dive and read those. We have a lot of research out there, journal articles, and I go through that information and share that with others. Stacy is a community development individual. She works with her cohorts to decide what is the need of Franklin County. I also look at the need of Morrow County where I work, but we look at our need throughout our state, the surrounding, county, the surrounding states. So thank you, it is. Um, an essential need. It covers many ground. So let's talk about how, um, oh, yes, please. You know, there's a searching website on, uh, I guess, called regular, uh, uh, regular mail. Mm -hmm. Or uh, I guess it's junk mail, but basically it's P-H-S. Yeah. P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. Yes, it's P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G, phishing, yes. Okay, and that's, it, it co-ops, yes, it can go in. And, and it's just one of those things too, like we learn, when you are buying something online, one of the things you do is on your website is you look for the, the lock, right? And that lock there, it tells you that it's encrypted and that you're safe and secure, but Every once in a while at Ohio State University, we'll get things that come through and we click the phishing button, which I do and be like, this email, something doesn't seem right. And it shoots off to the IT department and many people are starting to become more aware. That's another consumer information thing where libraries and other entities share, be aware, this is huge. Pay attention to your email. We like to think, oh, it's all safe. No, it's not until we, we get burned and we're like, then we spread the word, right? Okay, moving along then, how does financial technology work? Financial technology is multifaceted. There is a lot going on and it covers many, many different areas, um, financial services, areas, products. Um, so once again, we, we look at, it simplifies financial transactions for consumers and businesses. This is what financial technology does, making more accessible and basically more affordable uh, products and services out there, financial products and services. So 
it works basically that we can apply to um, companies and services, okay? So when we're looking at companies and services, it encompasses artificial intelligence, AI. We're not gonna go into artificial intelligence tonight. There's a lot going on there. It is, with chat, GBT, and all these things there, it is pushing forward faster than ever. But AI is a part of this financial technology because it helps to move it forward. It helps to uh, transfer information. Big data, does anybody know what big data is? Companies use big data. We've got the three Vs, variety, volumes, and velocity. There's a, a variety of data and a huge volumes. If you're a giant company, you've got huge volumes of, with a variety of data just being dumped into your computers and at a very quick rate, velocity. So much that humans can sift through this. It would take a very long time for us to sift through it make sense of it, reorganize it so that it's usable. But this is what then financial technology is helping out with, as well as encrypted blockchain technology. Um, Stacy briefly chatted a little bit about what our blockchain is, and I can always do more information on that in the future, but it's encrypted check technology. Blockchain is where um, it's a block in which a transaction has taken place between two people peer to peer and it becomes encrypted and it cannot be broken back into. So financial technology is a part of that. So this is to facilitate highly secure transactions that surround an internal network. So financial technology uh, strives to streamline our transaction processes. Quicker, faster, better, uh, until we hit a pitfall, you're right, and then we become more innovative and figure out how to deal with that pitfall so it doesn't happen again. So we give an example here, a mobile service like Venmo, where there's cash app out there, allows you to pay other people um, any time of the day. Um, you're sending funds directly to their desired bank account. Um, and however, the, the, the opposite would be if you paid instead with cash or a check, then that recipient would have to make a trip to the bank and deposit the money at not their leisure, but it, what's going on with that third party, that financial institution. So this is giving you a little bit more of an idea of how financial technology works. Moving us, go right ahead. Is that like a balance transfer of cash advance or pay? It's, it's, an, it's, an, it's an actual transfer of, yeah, so Let's say Stacy says, Candace, I'm throwing a birthday party and we're doing a giant, we're, we're gonna share it a gift and I need 20 bucks. And I say to her, okay, let me pull out my mobile app or I can go on my website, website and type in you know, Venmo, put in my passcode, and then I search for her information. It may say, she may say, I'm Stacy OSU you know, 121 or something. And I search her, I click her on her face and name, I verify that that's her and I have money in my account from my bank and it is already connected to my bank and boom, I transferred. And it is an immediate transfer because then she'll be like, I got, I, got, I got the money, thank you very much. So is that how, it is, it's a quick peer to peer. We cut out the middleman. I just said, hey, it's 2 a.m. and she's calling me saying, I need it, need it now. And I'm like, here it is. So that's what's great it's also great for when you're in different countries you know and you need to get transfer money fast yes yeah okay it could very well be yes mm -hmm. and everybody yes right yes yes exactly right they do it real fast, yes. So basically, when you go to some places and there's 15 of you at a restaurant and the, and the person waiting on you says, uh, we only do, we only split that check four ways. We're not gonna do it 15. You're like, don't worry. So-and-so is gonna pay for it and we're all going to shoot our money to that person by our mobile app. That's financial technology. That's what you're doing. And boom, that person can, has enough funds to pay for the meal. 
and then some, okay, hopefully for the tip, right? But no, this is good, you guys. You guys are understanding now that these how this application works, okay? So I've only put a few benefits and risks. There are a lot out there. But if we look at what a benefit is, it offers specific financial products and services adapted to the customer's needs. It's a personalized service. If you want to tie auto title transfer or whatever it is, you can find out there, I need insurance, I need this, I need that. You can find something that's going to connect with you personally in your personal needs. It's convenience, okay? Just what we said, it's real time. 24 hour services every day of the year. Stacy sends me, you know, sends me a text message at 2 a.m. and says, I need this, this, and this by 6 a.m. because we need to get donuts, do this and that, and I don't have the cash. And I'm like, here it is. And it's middle of the night, and we're accomplishing it. Risks. What our gentleman here has been talking about data security risks. Things are secure, and you can trust it. The issue we have out there is people do phishing. People are constantly attacking that to make it more of a risk. It's just called, you're often targeted by cyber attacks. There's so much going on out there that people have these automated uh, computers set up to find people's, you know, find things out there that people have gaps or holes in. For example, let's say you have five different accounts and you use one password. They find out that one password and that's what you use, they're in. And that pass, you know, so they're, they're starting to work on things. So, Yes, that's why we need to still be good consumers of what, what's going on out there. Lack of physical branches. I know my father's like, I'd like to do this and this and this. There's no branch I can go and talk to. And, you know, he's in his 80s. And while he does pay his bills online, um, sometimes he's like, I still want to go to a physical a, a building, a brick and mortar building. And that's a problem when you've got a problem. You're like, I need help now, and I must deal with it via email or social networks. And some of us just are not into social networks, and some of us just don't look at our emails anymore because it's we get more email than we do get snail mail, right? Okay, trying to push us through here. Are you using financial technology? If you're doing mobile banking, has anybody ever taken a picture of their check, signed their check, and taken a picture of the front and back, and uh, like somebody getting you, and then, yeah, and I, I Yes, it's a lot of fun when you do it. I just check off the back of my thing, but you have to put, you sign it, and then it says electronic mobile transfer to this bank or whatever, um, and it'll tell you back up closer, back up, you know, it's your app, you know, whatever your bank is or financial institution, it's great. I don't have to go to the bank anymore. I don't have to be like, oh, I got another errand. I have to run to the bank and deposit my check. But everybody else may say, well, I like doing that. Mobile banking, peer-to-peer -peer services, what we were just talking about, Venmo, PayPal, um, automated portfolio managers, people who used to have real life people manage your portfolio, your financial portfolio, now it's more automated. It's paying more attention. It knows what you want and what you like and it's searching out there and kicking information back at you. Trading platforms, we now are more automated. If you're trading your stocks and things like that, this is financial technology. Development and trading of cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrency, you've got um, uh, um, Ether, Bitcoin, I think it's uh, Dogecoin, things like that are out there, and that's financial technology. Um, Bitcoin may sound, cryptocurrencies, I'm not saying we need to be cautious, but we need to be cautious. They provide us benefits, but we're still paying attention. We're being optimistically cautious about these. We're going to hear so much more about them in the future and blockchain technology, which I'm working on my, um, my uh, focus on is more with those. And then budgeting apps. People are out there saying, I, I need an app that helps me stay on budget or helps me save more money or to pay off a debt. I'm trying to think of some of those. I don't know if Stacy can. Mint, Mint, Mint M-I-N-T, and what was the other one? Acorns. Yep. Acorns, I think. Wallet. What? Nerd wallet. Nerd wallet, yes, which really does focus a lot with blockchain in the future. Yes. 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 
get my bank statement, there's no, uh, no, no, no uh, what do you call it, a copy of the... Uh, you don't get a copy of your check anymore? American Electric Power, yes. So when you send them a check, they're not, you're not getting a hard copy picture of that back. Because it used to be when you wrote checks, you got, ended up getting in the mail a, a, a photographic copy of all those checks, right? And the back signature, I remember. And now if you want that, they're gonna charge you for it because it's a hard copy in paper. So they'll, yeah, so you're right. That's, that's why you may be saying, oh, I really liked that. But they're saying, we've moved on from that and we can supply you that picture, but you may, we need to have send it to you through email or something. The checks back. Cancel. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. So he's saying he used to get those checks back or used to get more of that information. What I'm going to say here is these are conversations I have at the dinner table, especially when we have our holidays and big families together, because I have a nephew who's 14 years old. And I can say things like black and white TV, and he's like, what's that? You know, very much if I ever said, you know, I used to get checks, or used to send checks, and they're like, they did? They sent you that and things back. This is that part of growing and learning, that lifelong learning, and I appreciate you sharing that because we need to stay in touch with those things so that we understand where we're going and where we've been so we know where we're going. And if we're going in a direction that is not beneficial, that's when they'll start to slow things down more. Cryptocurrencies start to make people think a little bit before we push forward. Of the check, yeah. Okay, right, because when you go to their website and sign in, that's interesting. So maybe that's something you make a suggestion that, but they may say then you go to your banking website, sign in, and ask to click on and specifically look at that, yes. But that may be something that you're needing as a consumer, and you let American um, power, you know, and light, I can't remember what it's called, APL or something like that, yeah. So, but when you're, there's a need that you specifically need, reach out because companies may say, wow, you're the 20th person or the 100th person to reach out, we're gonna look into that. Can I add something about yeah. the, what this gentleman said? I think that the ADT is like some companies, like um, my insurance company, we convert your paper check to ACH. See, this way it's just called automatic. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we convert that to electronic payment so this way you won't see your text. So you mm -hmm. I think that some companies are doing yes. that, but mm -hmm. most of the companies they still do this uh yes. still see your image when you go right. to your account, mm -hmm. but not every company mm -hmm. does that. Yes. Mm -hmm. That that's a very good point, Helen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes what happens too is like if I pay online, some things will go right through and say, hey, within 24 hours it'll go through. Other, some, some things, some companies will only accept a check from my bank and then that bank, my bank has to write them a check and send it so then it's five days before it gets through. Um, just all part of that financial technology that's happening so much. It's like hefty, you know, a lot going on but I appreciate you guys sharing. This is great. I'm gonna push us on through to our future. It's innovation. Innovation, that's the hot button word. Um, industry is consistently 
evolving. It just changes faster than you can think of. Next, you know, it's going to be, you know, we have a lot of just innovation of electric vehicles. So much is happening. So in our finance world across the globe, it's we've got all these minds working on stuff and people are coming up with things like at one time um, the invention was the phone, right? Now we have an innovation on the phone and it's called, it was just called a mobile phone and now it's a smartphone. We just kept hopefully improving on it, seeing pitfalls, cleaning those pitfalls up and making sure um, that that innovation is positive and beneficial. So it's gonna continue on to digital banking and blockchain technology and applications will continue to grow and evolve. Um, so AI and ML will become more affordable and we're gonna expect them to play an increasing role in just a bigger, much huge role in um, the financial, uh, financial technologies continued evolution. So you're gonna hear so much more. AI is just on fire right now and we're gonna try to keep up with that as well. Our challenge and is realism and regulation, kind of what we touched on before, regulation. Realism, we're implementing and integrating new technologies is slow and unsteady. It's kind of like walking on cobblestone or something or on bricks that are old and you're just trying to find your footing. It is slow, it is unsteady with um, implementing and integrating new technologies. And then there are just some light regulatory constraints and they're focusing on trying to get more of this regulated. But things are moving so fast that it's taking time for regulations to, for Congress, for things to show up and be discussed and put into place for the, for the betterment of all of us and for the protection of consumers, okay? Okay, I'm gonna turn it over to Stacy and let her chat take us home. So the review of FinTech, it refers to the use of technology to improve and automate financial services. The concept has existed for over 100 years, um, continuously created by startups and by companies. Consumer protection principles apply so we don't get scammed, so we're aware. As with anything, benefits and risks, so be aware and be cautious. You, the consumer, are using it in some form or another, and the industry is constantly evolving. And Candace is gonna pass out some evaluations, and there's, if anyone has questions, you can ask now. I will point out, uh, it's a very risky thing to Yes. You can, unless you know the pitfalls, exactly. And so what you're saying too though is because they want to know if you're trading in Bitcoin, have you gained money? Have you gained income on it? And if so, we're, we're gonna examine that and you may be taxed, you're right. And it is so true to be cautious when it comes to cryptocurrency, unless you start to feel comfortable and then just venture in very slowly or lightly until we all become more comfortable. So, good question. Anything else? Just a thought, I think the no matter I'm how, sorry. how much the technology changes, I feel that, I think the young people, especially right now, we are not like our generation. I like, that. for me, I, I'm still kind of classy. I came like kind of register, so I know how much I have in my bank account. I think for the young people, yeah, it's nice to have the technology. On the other hand, they, they don't know how much they have. It's very easy to overdraft their account. Yes. You know, I feel that's kind of a downside. Uh -huh. Especially if they don't have much right. there. The overdraft is basically right. so so they're adventurous and they have no holds barred and they just go for it. And what you're saying is 
a little bit of caution is needed and we as older adults need to explain that to them because yes they're just they're just spending and not paying as much attention and i think it is the way of the world at the moment but we as older adults i appreciate all of you sharing like things from that you experienced you know years ago decades ago because it's a reminder that we're all in this together and we need to make sure that we're taking care of each other as consumers and paying attention and um, protecting each other which also means protecting those young adults who think that they can just pick up and that technology and they no, don't recognize that what we recognize to be cautious so yes excellent stacy do you have anything you, you want to add or anything else okay here's some of our resources if you need to know more information connect with us i do have um business cards i can hand out and then um we talk about family and consumer sciences and we focus on healthy finances healthy people and healthy relationships Okay. Well, if we have your information, then I'm happy to send that to you. What do you have? Um, if we have like an email, or I can give you my business card, you email me and I'll email you those back. Please give me your, your old-fashioned old fashioned business my card. My, I, I don't have an electronic one, but that might be something we can look into, but it doesn't serve everybody, right? right. Okay. I can give you Okay, that would be wonderful. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate your time and connect with us.